Welcome to our Arnie's birthday Zoom. March 25th. This guy can't be 43 years old. It's impossible, but uh, we all remember him as number 34. So we have a little flip here on this March 25th. But uh, Nico Kudavitas joins us, one of the all time fan favorites uh, at linebacker for Purdue, longtime NFL career, successful. We'll talk a little bit about what he's doing now, but uh, successful in business as well. But uh, Nico, uh, 43 is a good age. Happy birthday to you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Great to be here. And uh, it's always good to be to see the old uh, golden black. Um, it's yeah. been a while seeing those articles pass through the dormitories uh, at Wiley Hall and uh, on campus there <laughs> in West Lafayette. But uh, it's always good to see that. Yeah, we loved covering you in the day with Brian Newbert and, and staff. Uh, you guys were entertaining. And you were damn good. And that was the other thing. And uh, uh, that part is a big thing. All right, I always ask this question about what were birthdays like growing up in your in your uh, childhood? You weren't in the middle of football season. I guess suppose that was a good thing, but uh, in some ways. But t tell me about that uh, as a as a young person. What was that? Uh, what was a typical birthday growing up? So um, being that uh, both my parents are um, immigrants, migrated to this yeah. country um, uh, from the Greek descent, uh, I, I've been very fortunate enough that I was born on Greek Independence Day, which is March 25th. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yes. Um, and obviously it's a, it's a, a, a huge holiday and celebration um, for the country of Greece and those Greek Americans here that live in the United States. Um, so that, that, that was a special part of it. Um, and you know, my mother would, my mother and father and, and all and my entire family that migrated over all in the restaurant business and don't ask me why, but that's where they found their, their, their love and passion for, and they became restaurateurs and you know, you know how that goes. A lot of hours, um, it's a tough business at times and, and especially during uh, the pandemic, but um, they've always seemed to find their way out of it. And they continue to work today at the ages that they're at. They're both in their 70s. They work a lot of hours. Um, that's just a European mindset. Uh, but, yeah. but those days, you know, we would go to the restaurant and um, my father and mother would cook something with my brothers because I'm one of three, three boys. I'm the youngest. And then we would have some family over and, you know, they would do a small little cake, sing happy birthday and um, and give some presents out, whatever, um, you know, we always want at that time much different than it is today, but it was probably some sort of video game uh, or some <laughs> toy thing of that nature. But um, they were, they were fun. Um, uh, it, they're good memories. And, you know, as we continue to get older, now I have three boys of my own and um, yeah. their birthdays come and, and we try to make them a special time. So, so they can remember them as uh, because, you know, time, time just flies by really quickly and, and we want those to be special times that they enjoy. And they and uh, well said and a good good tact with the three kids to uh, enjoy it all. And, that, and it sounds like you're doing that. All right, bring us up to date on what's going on in your professional life. Obviously, uh, if I'm looking at LinkedIn correctly, you're at Fair in Fairfield, Connecticut, which is kind of home-ish area. Uh, yep. uh, it would Scala Partners, if I'm pronouncing that right. But give us give us a little bit of what's up with you uh, on a professional basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, I was going into my eighth eighth year in the NFL, and the I'm sure everybody remembers um, the ownership. Um, the owners had a disagreement with the players, which is the collective bargaining agreement. So yeah. the, there was a dispute. So we had a work stoppage. I think it was 09 or 2010, somewhere yeah. around there. And um, at that time, I was getting into the latter part of my career, and obviously any football player knows at some point it's going to end. Nobody plays forever. Yeah. So um, uh, my brother was working for an institutional developer in, in Manhattan, um, working on larger, larger development products. And I, I, I went into the player development's office at, when I was with the Patriots at the time. And I said, Hey, since we can't come to the facility anymore, can you, can you latch me on um, with a developer locally, either in the Boston area or New York or Connecticut, that I can go job shadow and, and intern for. So he hooked me up with the developer in Westchester County, and I basically would go and shadow the, the gentleman. And, you know, we would go into municipalities and look at tax liens, look at subdivisions, uh, zoning regulations, 
And as I continue to get some exposure in the real estate, I said, wow, interesting. If you can purchase strategic real estate in good locations, um, it can be very prosperous. Um, so as I did that, obviously the, the owners in, in the, the union came to an agreement. We went back to work and, um, you know, every so often I'd have a conversation with my brother, you know, where he stood in his career, um, in, working for an institutional company in, in Manhattan. And at some point after that 08 hit with the housing, the whole housing market, uh, really their major capital investor was, um, not willing to seek out new deals. So he was kind of sitting on the shelf and we just said at the time, OK, maybe we just kind of pick something off, um, non-institutionally, something small in, in, in Connecticut. And we try to develop something for a little bit of cash flow. And fast forward, like two years later, um, I sat in Belichick's office and he basically says, you know, it's time to move on. And I said, no problem, coach. I feel the same way. I knew it was my time. Um, and my brother decided to leave his firm and we started our platform, which is called Scala Partners, which is a development company mostly focused on uh, multifamily projects, typically what you're seeing all over the country. Anywhere, our first building was, <clears throat> excuse me, a little boutique building, 18 units in a great little town center. And then we went to 100 units and 160 units. And now we're focused on a 200 unit project. Um, so it, it really, it, it kind of, metastasized into the from development into construction, which I I took uh, building construction management at Purdue um, my You're first right. couple of years with Stuart Schwager until uh, Joe Tiller called us in the office and he says, uh, these labs are interfering with a lot of our practice times. Um, <laughs> we really, you guys really fig need to figure out what you want to do. And we said, all right, coach, we, we get the point. So uh, we transferred into, you know, business management and, um, and kind of the rest was history. We were both fortunate enough to get drafted and, and continue our career in the NFL. But I'm extremely busy, extremely fortunate. Um, the business, the multifamily mixed use projects around the entire country has taken off. I mean, I'm assuming Indiana on campus, off campus, Texas, South Carolina, Connecticut, you name it, they're building them. And we've been fortunate enough to take advantage of that uh, very, very popular and demanding mix. Um um, that use has been very popular here, um, especially in the Northeast, but definitely around the country. Yeah. What, you know, you like, and this is, this isn't a job interview for you, but I'm always curious to what tipped you. I mean, you obviously your family, hard work, you're you played like you were a hard worker. There's, you know, there was no, no messing around when number 34 was running around for Purdue. I get that. But what, you know, now that you look at it through the lens of 20 years or since you've been at Purdue, just what has been that skill set that you've needed to, to to continue to develop to make it to make it to make it at the level that you want to be professionally? Well, I think I think being a um, a student athlete, period, doesn't matter which sport, but just yeah, kind of defines you as a purpose in a number of different ways, right? It create it creates yeah. a lot of responsibilities, a lot of discipline, work ethic. But it really creates structure in our life, right? We're, we're kind of like, we always say we're creatures of habits, right? And th those habits, no matter what they are, we want to continue doing. And whether it's continuing to play sports or moving on and transitioning into the re real world, I try to apply a lot of those traits that I learned. Um, and hard work and sacrifice is, is a major one. Um, not only sacrificing yeah. and taking huge risks financially, but you're taking um, you're taking an extraordinary amount of time away from your family on on, yeah. on sacrificing that time to, again, try to prosper and, and, and build a future. Um, that's not easy. Again, any any athlete transitioning out of professional, whether that's baseball, basketball, you got you, you know, the horror stories, yeah. right? Yeah. The certain percentages are either broke, divorced, struggling with addiction. I mean, those are very high percentages for. For people that have done one thing their whole lives and then now it's over and how do you transition into the real world and, and feel that gratitude and fulfillment that you were getting as being a pro? You're not being compensated even close to what you were, right? You you may be now home full time with a wife and, you know, could be multiple kids, could be, you know, no kids. And then you have to try to find something that you somewhat like to enjoy that can fulfill a little bit of that passion that you had in sports, right? 
So it, it's really, a, it's like a perfect storm that hits guys. So what I, I, I try to give as much advice um, to the younger players, um, prepare yourself tremendously, um, not only financially, but prepare your mindset that it is going to end one day, network and, and try to figure out what you want to do and you'll enjoy doing. So this way you're ahead of the game when that happens. And um, I'm sure we can talk a little bit en- about NIL, which is, you know, much different than what we were playing. But again, I, I think the NC- NCAA is kind of screwed up a number of things. Uh, but pay- paying the players, I thought, was very, very important. I just don't think the structure yep. that they have it today is makes the most sense. Um, yeah. You know, and I'm sure a lot of people have an opinions. I wish the money, a portion of the money would go into some sort of escrow account so that when these kids do graduate, um, they have some 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 economic foundation where if they wanted to purchase a home or they have some stability because you're not everybody's not getting jobs. Everybody's not going to the pros. Right. So if they can build for the future, I think that's that's more helpful, because, again, we were all young, 17, 18 years old. And, and then you start putting you know, a, a serious amount of money in our pockets. I'm not sure we're making the best decisions. Well said. And, and, and yeah, we could go on for hours and it, but your perspective and you were one of the first ones, I don't know. And I can't remember. And it was, you had some t-shirts as I remember the hammer and the nail. And, and, and I can't, and I don't was, tell me the story. Was that, I'm not it was getting in someone, in NCAA, yeah, but you were for one of the you were entrepreneurial as a player as much as you could be in those days. It seemed. Am, am I remembering that? Remember yeah, yeah. That they, they, a fan base created. These I still have that T-shirt, by yeah, the way. Neeks somehow, Freaks, Neeks Freaks yeah. T-shirts. Uh, yeah, the fan base created Neeks Freaks T-shirts, which was great. Um, and uh, you know, when you when you're walking into a stadium and you see a whole crowd wearing those shirts. You 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 gives you reassurance like you, you got to better step up and be ready to play today out there to show those guys that you're fighting for not only that your teammates but the fan base as well. Yeah. All right, I, I one thing you said that was interesting. Many things you said that was interesting, but one thing uh, your your last conversation with Bill Belichick and and it is a competitive is a guy that you were and you had to be. I mean, you had stops in Seattle, Tampa Bay. You were in a Super Bowl with New England. But when you have that conversation with a with a coach who you I would guess respected a great deal, but they tell you it's time, uh, and you, yet you're a competitive guy. What what went to your head in terms of all right? I'm going to push this longer, or maybe he's right uh, in terms of that. I mean, what what was your mindset at that moment? Yeah, it it, it is mixed, right? Because yeah, when you when you're feeling good, you're at your highest strength of working out and training. You're like, yeah, I can play. I got five more. I got four more. I got three more, whatever it may be. And then you go through training camp and training camp is miserable, right? You're beat up and you're going through a very long season. And and you start to question yourself at times because, you know, we all have injuries, right? Um, You start dealing with these injuries and they they feel like they're never going to heal because you continue to re-injure them and hurt them. I mean, the season is a – is a long, tough season in the NFL. Um, and so you you question yourself at that time, do I ha- can I play another one? And then the offseason comes, you refresh, and you're like, I, I, I want to continue playing. Um, yeah. When I got called in, it was the end of training camp. It, I think we were going into our last preseason game against the Giants, and Coach Belichick called me in. I was on my 10th year. So I, I was able to get at least nine in the bucket. I wanted, I really wanted 10. That's like a milestone yeah. guys really want to achieve. Um, but I had, I had pretty bad nerve, nerve injury in my neck down on my arm, yeah. uh, lower back issues. And when he told me and sat me down, that was one thing about coach Belichick and, you know, as phenomenal as he coach, what you respect more is your, your boss or your employer is honest to you and not sugarcoating anything. And he was, he was very blunt and honest. And uh, I respect that from him. And he's like that with all players. Um, but I respected that. And, and I, and I, I, I knew at that time um, because one, I, we, I was working behind the scenes on the development side and we just had gotten yeah. this l- small little boutique, 18 unit apartment building approved. So it was getting ready to move into construction. So I, you know, I was, I was ready for it that moment. And I knew once he told me, 
the day I left, I, I was essentially at work working for Scala um, in the development side and then eventually into the construction side of things. So I had, my transition was very, very fortunate. It, um, it was prepared that way. And um, it, it turned out to be uh, probably one of the best decisions I made. A couple more questions. I want to ask you, obviously, about your playing career and looking at Purdue and looking back at that, you know, tremendous amount of success. As your freshman year, you get a chance to go to the Rose Bowl. You you play uh, at an all Big Ten level. I still think maybe the 2003 team might have been the best team of them all. Uh, uh, I, but t- tell me about just kind of what your takeaway is from your experience for playing for Co- Coach Joe Tiller and Brock Spack. Uh, those kind of guys and what they've meant to you over the years. Yeah, I mean, really the credit goes to that coaching staff. Um, again, the world has really changed now, right? The 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 Big Ten is now expanding more more teams, right? At some point, it's probably going to be two conferences and, and, and no more of all the other conferences. That's just the way it seems like it's going. But at that time, right, you're always competing – against these historical universities like the Michigans and the Ohio States, right? Which always, you know, the, the the middle of the pack and the lower end of the Big Ten teams always got overlooked. So when you when you create a buzz around a really special quarterback, you compete in the yeah. Alamo Bowl against Kansas State, right? You make that huge upset, yeah. right? And you tell your, your staff to go find – players that meet the mold of bring your lunch pail to work every single day yeah. and work hard and good things will happen. And that's what coach Tiller and his staff went out and did. And, um, you know, the group of guys that came in, we, I mean, the bonds we created will last forever. Um, we had that fortunate opportunity to go to uh, California to Pasadena and just build build more of that relationship we had with each other. I think that whole entire whole offensive line got drafted. Obviously, yeah. uh, Matt Light went out. One of my teammates when I went to New England went out and I think won three Super Bowls in the first three years he left Purdue. Kind of like Car- Karloftis. He's got two under his belt. Yeah. He just left Purdue. I mean, some guys just hit it right. I mean, Breeze having his, obviously, Super Hall of Fame career and a number of other guys. And – you know, you got to really give credit to that staff. They they had a mold of who they were looking for. High character guys, smart guys, worked hard, would fight tough, and um, and they really put that together. Um, and, and then as the offense, which dominated um, uh, for a long period of time there with Breeze, then we our defense was really what came to fruition and really started to dominate on, on the national level. I mean, I think – Eight guys on defense got drafted um, my senior year, and then we had Nick Hardwick on the offense who made the ninth player. Um, so just just a special group of guys. Uh, all I give again, all my credit goes to that coaching staff being able to do that when there's there's so many so many other distractions out there, and in, in you know the recruiting the recruiting game is is a dirty game. Um, and they were able to go out and seek the guys they wanted, and they coached hard. They coached us the right way. They coached us to be tough, and and that's what we went out and did, and um, I thought we represented that very, very well for the university. Yeah, you will always be an all-time favorite just because of that. You were the original Greek freak. George Koloftis (laughs) is not the original (laughs) Greek freak. I try to tell people that. And as great as George is going to be, and he is, I think, going to be, I don't know, I'm, I'm curious just in, just your evaluation, because he seems to me high motor, high character, hard worker. He is going to be a all pro level guy. Do you see that uh, for him down the road? Yeah, I wish I got to meet him in person. Uh, I, you know, his, his, you'd like him. You're similar. <laughs> yeah, he's got a great story. Um and I know he he was actually he was born in Greece, right? And migrated over. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. And then he ended up in West Lafayette. I know that. And he has a brother as well, right? That played at Purdue. Right. And, and right, Yanni is playing well. He is a junior on the team. He's a, and uh, gosh, I'm drawing a complete blank. Does he wear your number? 
I don't he's think so. It's, it's 34. But anyway, he's Yanni is a uh, uh, going to be going to probably start this year as well for sure. for. Uh, uh, yeah, I, th- I think um, he's going to have a great career at Kansas City uh, on an All Pro level. I mean, you can you can just see him. He he definitely makes a difference out there. He's got a high motor. He's relentless, and um, he's obviously understands the game very very well. Uh, you know, he kind of you know we <laughs> Purdue again. The, the defense and outside linebackers that they've produced that have gone into the NFL and just had these phenomenal careers is just, it, it really, it's a, it's a, it's an, an amazing feat. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I'm having a Monday morning. I get too much NCAA tournament on my brain. Yanni is number 14, not, not number 34, but uh, really hardworking guy and is working to make a, make his way in, in college football. Uh, and uh, George has, uh, has been, we'll work on connecting you guys. You need to talk to each other. He's, yeah. uh, he's, he's a great, uh, certainly, and a great, and, and the thing about George that you'd be proud of is his development, you know, coming in and learning leadership, uh, becoming a leader, uh, especially in his last year at Purdue uh, and getting Purdue to a very good bowl game as well. He he did, he's done that. And I think he's, he's in a good spot. Like I said, it's, good, it's helpful when you go to, a, uh, you know, you get drafted where he did and be able to play uh, with a, an established team and not have yeah. to be a star right away. I think that was a, a yeah. positive thing as well. So, all right, I got to ask you NCAA basketball because it is the topic of the day and Purdue after last year, you couldn't wear your Purdue stuff out and around too much. <laughs> now you can, but uh, you, you understand sport as well as anyone. This is a pretty special outfit. Uh, yes, Zach Eady is really good, but it seems to me, we know they're very well coached, but there's a lot of pieces to this group. It's not just like when you were there, it wasn't just Kyle Orton and Drew Brees. It was Nico Kudavitas and it was Craig Terrell and it was others. Um, tell me about what you see from, uh, from, did you watch yesterday? I assume you did. And yes. I assume you'll be tuned in on Friday night when Purdue takes on, I, uh, Gonzaga. I did. I did watch yesterday. Um, and the, the, <laughs> I call them the boys, but the, the team played very, very well. Um, Edie obviously is just a monster in the middle. Um, the way they're dishing down the ball. And then once a double team comes, he dishes it back. Guys were hitting three pointers. It was it was nice to see good fluid basketball, good shooting, great defense. I mean, when you see 100 points put up in a college game, team is playing really, really well and, and, and working on all cylinders. Unfortunately, I live in the state of Connecticut, and Connecticut has a very yes, you do. good basketball <laughs> team. So really I good. hope for a, a showdown here because they got a big kid, I think, from Bristol, Connecticut, that's about six four or yes. seven four, something like that. So it it, it will be interesting. Um, I, again, as being a former athlete, all you really want to see is is really good competition, and I want to see Purdue um, this year. You know, after what happened last year, this is kind of that redemption year to go as far as they can, and and hopefully they can win this whole thing. That would be fantastic for the university, Coach Painter, that whole staff. Um, again, when you take that much heat the year before, there's still a lot of pressure on you, but the, the, the guys are playing real well and they just got to continue to build on that. Yeah. I think we all say, at least from a Purdue perspective, get to the final four and you'll sort it out. Yeah. Donovan Klingon's really good, but boy, Zach Eady is really, really good as you, as you well point. All right. Yeah. Yep. Thanks so much for your time. And, and, uh, what a privilege to have, to have to share a little bit of time and, and your insight. Happy Greek Independence Day. I won't forget. Thank now you. I'll remember that going in. Uh, that's a big thing. Best to you and your family. And thank you. I, I will. I always say to guys that were so good to us over the years and our staff, we, we enjoyed. One thing, and you kind of hit on that, it's not quite – Ryan Walters, I don't know if you've had a chance to be in front of him. Great guy, and you'd love his defensive – uh, perspective. I think he's going to have a challenge, but I think that he may get there. But it's, it's not the same as when you had uh, Jim Chaney and 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 Joe Tiller and Brock Spack to talk to all the time. But uh, we we and 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 a cast of characters because you guys were in a good way. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. um, and there wasn't an, and there wasn't enough social media to, to really be a problem. In your, no, in thank your goodness. Time. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> Alan, I appreciate. Uh, it. Have a great. Have a <laughs> great. They, they, great. We, out to me to try to get back to a game uh the, it's difficult because my three boys all play football and i'd like them to come with me right to experience that um 
Um, they reached out to try to uh, do an honorary captain to one of the home games this year. So hopefully I can make it happen. If not this year, it's going to happen soon. Um, I just want my family and my boys to be out there at the same time to enjoy that same experience. Yeah, you love it. The stadium is great. What they redid with it is great. The atmosphere is good. And Ryan Walters has got a lot of energy. You'd love playing for him, I think. And and uh, he he's the kind of guy that you would uh, would be uh, would love to have. Hey, one quick question: Your, your boys' yeah. ages are? May I ask? Uh, well, my my oldest turns fifteen in on uh, two days on the twenty seventh. Uh, my middle okay. one is thirteen, and my youngest is eleven. And are they all linebackers, or what, what do they like to do? No, I, my, I know they probably like to hit people, but what do they play? Yeah, my, my youngest is my linebacker. He's He, he emulates okay. most of me um, at the 11-year-old position. <laughs> the other two are, you know, safeties and wide receivers. All right. Well, thanks so much for your time, and, uh, and you. enjoy the rest of the day. I'm sure you will, and uh, we appreciate that. It's so great to get reconnected with you, and uh, we appreciate that very much. Likewise. Have a great one. All right, so we'll be back. We'll have another Arnie's birthday Zoom before long. Uh, uh, they, these are a lot of fun to do, uh, and we'll look forward to the next one down the road. Thanks for taking the time to watch and listen, and uh, we'll see you down the road.